Most people prefer flat land for their homes, but in Wellington at least, what was available quickly became crowded. So home builders took to the hills. But as they went up, so did the cost. Excavations and foundations are expensive, and access is often difficult. More important in a crowded city, haphazard building on steep slopes didn't utilize available land to its best advantage. One solution to the land shortage is high density housing, and flats are stacked up into ivory towers as old houses are demolished. For many, this kind of living combines the convenience of a house on the flat and the pleasure of an elevated view which only a hillside home could provide. But there are those who miss their lawns and trees. Now, heavy earth moving equipment is providing another alternative. Steep hillsides are being ironed out. The tops are scraped off and pushed into the valleys. And taking shape is a suburban development new to this country. On Watts Peninsula, a 54-acre three-stage project has been planned by the Wellington City Council. This once hilly and relatively inaccessible area will eventually provide settlement for 2,500 people. Heavy machinery is making a new type of self-contained suburb possible. Superlative housing sites will combine all the advantages of living on flat land and the hills. To a child, a city can be intimidating, big and overwhelming. minutes and a doorbell away is a more leisurely place, the Lower Hut Day Nursery. This was started 12 years ago by store owners to encourage women shoppers. Open eight hours a day, it now provides a valuable service for the whole community. 
while his mother scrambles through butchers, bakers and candlestick makers, the child is equally busy in his own small town. Dress-up dolls, sticks of chalk, lumps of clay, slides and swings. These make up his world, and here he is at home. In everything he does, listening, watching, talking, playing, he is learning, learning to cope with his environment. Several children come daily because of domestic hardship, and for these, as well as the other children, activities are organized. Being part of an active community soon teaches tolerance, and discipline is encouraged. In tidying up the nursery, for example. After lunch comes a rest period for busy minds and active bodies. These children will soon be taking their first steps into a wider and less sympathetic community, full of jangling school bells, alphabets and arithmetic. In this small society, they have learned to accept those first bumps and scratches. Here, they are in fact learning to live. Thank you. 